Well, this actually brings to an interesting point about food and about diets, because um, there are people who are adamant about avoiding plants, saying that plants are trying not to be eaten, and uh, they have all kinds of anti-nutrients, and they can damage your gut. Um, so there's definitely a camp of car carnivores. Um, so some people are not so convinced about eating all these vegetables and plants, but then there's another camp that are vegans, you know, that they only want to eat plants and they don't want to eat anything that has to do with animals. And they think that it's doing wonders for their health. So um, with, you know, with your specialization in gut, uh, what do you say about these raging debates? I would say whatever someone's eating, if they have permeability in the gut, eventually they're going to get allergic to it. So it's true. What they're, what they're experiencing is true. Carnivores, if they were eating plants and they had a lot of permeability, I've seen a lot of gut microbiota testing on carnivores. It's terrible. They're pretty terrible. Um, they have every pathogen growing in there, really, literally every pathogen. Um, so it's not a wonder to me that they find when they take out what they're eating, wh whatever it might be, if they take out plants, okay, oh, they feel better. And they eat, add more meat, they, they feel better. And then for vegans, if they were eating meat, and let's say they weren't feeling well, because they started to develop allergies, food intolerance, um, because they have permeability, if they take out what they're eating, let's say meat, they suddenly feel better and they eat more plants that they weren't eating, they're going to be better. They're going to feel fine. So both camps are correct. But what I would say is um, if you look at centenarians who have all the genetics we all have, right, because they're from all around the world, the blue zones, whether you're looking at Costa Rica, Okinawa, Japan, Bama, China, Italy, or Sardinia, um, you'll see their diet is omnivorous. Mm. No healthy society on earth that doesn't eat animals. There's also no society on earth that doesn't eat plants. Mm. Who's wrong or right, right? And mm -hmm. what these people have is they lack health care. They're mm -hmm. usually in a rural area and they're not getting antibiotics. They're mm -hmm. not getting processed food. They're not getting emulsifiers in their processed food. Mm -hmm. Right. So their guts are ultimately really, really healthy. Mm -hmm. And all the keystone flora, they have the flora like in our probiotic, the bifido maximus, bifobacterium longum. That's why they call it longum. It's it's for it was first, you know, detected in people who had long, long lives. Mm. Longum is associated. It's a, there's an enrichment in people who are healthy. So it's good to have it. It's a keystone. It feeds other flora, actually. It makes something on the outside of its uh, shell, shell called exopolysaccharides, EPS. So they'll take, they have something called the bifid shunt, bifido shunt, the bifid shunt, which takes monosaccharides, you know, fructose, glucose, and others, and transforms them into good food for others between meals, other flora to eat between meals. It's known as exopolysaccharides. So they're mm -hmm. very altruistic. They feed others. So if they're missing, this big chunk of like part of the ecosystem goes missing, right? You know, in a village, we have like a butcher. And if you don't have a butcher, how are you going to like process an animal? like beef or chicken or, you know, you need something, somebody to process it. So bifidos kind of has that role and it's very antimicrobial. They'll literally just knock out E. coli. Mm -hmm. so you see an e, e. coli overgrowth in a gut. It's usually because they're missing bifido. They're deficient. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, mean, I think carnivores, you know, they don't tolerate oxalate rich foods. Well, if we look at their gut, they're missing oxalate degrading bacteria. I have five oxalate degrading bacteria in our bifido maximus probiotic. Bifidobacteria longum is an oxalate degrader, so is lactobacillus rhamnosus. And what studies show is even one round of antibiotics will knock these species out and people instantly become stone formers. Their urine is detected to have hypooxaluria. They're more prone to these calcifications and it could be in peripheral vasculature, breast tissue that becomes fibrocystic breast disease, or if they're prone, it can be a kidney stone later.